So the inevitable Fallout secret layers have been revealed via the official account on Twitter for Fallout. I'll go through each one towards the end of the video talking about my feelings on the secret layers and their inclusions and whether or not I like them. I've got quite a big Fallout fan and I absolutely love the Vault Tech mascot of Vault Boy. The one with Trinisphere and Winter Orbit Sphere Resistance absolutely has my interest. But the bit that has caused the most amount of humdrum is almost 100 retweets of the secret hidden card being revealed. This is a Vault Boy Mana Vault of him coming out of Vault 13. But the Mana Vault isn't included in any of the secret layers by, uh, as a thing you just buy and get. It's going to be a secret or hidden card which all secret layers up until now have had, by the way. I'll go into that more in a moment. In essence, there's a hidden card in each one. It could be this Codex Shredder, this Wastes, or this Mana Vault. Meaning you can get a dollar rare, or you can get a $50 rare. Now the humdrum about this is people saying that this is just turning secret layers into gambling by telling us upfront what you could potentially win to try and increase the FOMO, the fear of missing out on getting in on the drop and having a chance at getting one of those Mana Vaults. And whilst that's not untrue, it just feels a bit strange that we're up in arms about it now when this is nothing new to Magic the Gathering at large or Secret Lairs. Each Secret Lair drop in the past has come with a hidden card in each box or envelope or whatever format they've come in in the post as they've changed the packaging over the years. These have ranged from stained glass versions of current Planeswalkers in standard that are good and strong in eternal formats, right through to unplayable shit like just a random sliver or a fucking uh, basic land, right through to numbered reversed foil versions of classic cards like in this case Visceras here, this one on screen, sold for $1,600 at auction. And whilst at several points during Secret Lair's time we didn't know what the hidden card would be, it was known ahead of time that there would be a hidden card since the very early days of Secret Lair, which means that people knew they could get a $3 sliver or they could luck out and get a serialized reverse mirrored card they can sell on Facebook for $1,000. In essence, there has been a randomized, I'm going to use the word, gambling element to Secret Lairs since the beginning. A randomized element that is not unusual to magic. It is fucking wild to me that we're still at this point where people are upset that there might be a randomized amount of rarity in your randomized booster packs. Sometimes you open a bulk rare, sometimes you open a mana crypt. That is, in some ways, a negative because people become obsessed with the idea of taking that 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 gamble to get that that hit. But on the other side, it's actually quite exciting to open booster packs. There are pros and cons about randomized boosters that I could talk about till the cows come home. The biggest problem for me comes with when wizards differentiate and separate out the really good shit into expensive premium boosters and leave the normal boosters with less. If anything, they've got better at that recently with play boosters coming up having loads of incredibly strong and powerful reprints for commander in eternal formats in thunder junction look you might not like the cowboy hats but mind break trap getting a reprint is a good thing they're doing good work there the question is do i think it's predatory to tell us that you have a small chance of opening a 50 dollars rare in your hidden card slot of a secret lair well by its very nature it will prey upon people with those tendencies towards gambling but that isn't dissimilar to normal booster packs and i've always approached every single secret lair that i've bought through from um international women's day through to yoji shinkawa i've always treated them as i'm getting these cards and whatever the bonus card is it's quite literally that a bonus. I don't factor it into the purchase of it or what I'm going to get at all. So whilst I won't say that there isn't a predatory element to any sort of randomized loot box, booster pack, randomized card product, of course there is to an extent, I don't see why we're surprised or shocked that the game that's been doing it for 30 years is still doing it with a secret lab product that's very successful that it's been doing it with already for like, what, three or four years. Adamantly pro-consumer, but I just don't understand how we can be angry about that. On top of that, I've seen people say just put Mana Vault into one of the secret lairs. And I don't see why you'd expect them to do that. In an ideal world, they would, but Mana Vault and Mana Crypt are premium chase rares that are used to sell packs. This is not a crypt, this is actually a vault. And it's a vault because the vault thing makes sense with Vault Boy and Vault Tech and the vaults within the game, of course. But these cards are reprint equity that they will continue to use to farm the interest of commander players to buy randomized sealed product. And I'd have a lot more sympathy of thinking it was scummy or shitty if these cards actually mattered in any situation where accessibility to a competitive format mattered. This is commander after all, or arguably vintage but no one is playing or wanting this fallout card for vintage right so ultimately you can just proxy this anyway it doesn't fucking matter it literally does not matter that mana vault or mana crypt are expensive because they're only played in formats where it does not matter i am much more about banging the drum for accessibility for formats where you have to play the official cards to be able to play official sanctioned magic i want legacy and modern and pioneer and to a lesser extent standard or any constructive format to survive within the tournament structures that feed into and feed from Wizards of the Coast. I think competitive magic is really important and thus making it accessible to all walks of life, not just 
rich white kids from middle suburbia of America. I think people from, you know, less privileged areas like, I don't know, the South Americas, for example. I guess I shouldn't bring that up because we seem to not give a fucking shit about anyone outside of North America at the moment. But again, it's not that. You don't need a vault. Firstly, you don't need it to play the casual format because the casual format doesn't need anything. You can fucking do whatever you want. And on top of that, if you want to play those high-powered commander ever, ever, then by all means do so. Just proxy the fucking thing. No one cares. I think the sentiment that I've seen about Mana Vault and the predatory nature of it within this whole, like, secret lair shit, I think it's all feeding off of, like, other elements. I guess, firstly, it's the most... Uh, uh, like in your face use of the, the the fear of missing out here's a randomized thing you might get because it's at the forefront of a promotion with a product that you know casuals are probably interacting with more than most secret layers because it's one of those universes beyond um, products that draws the eyes of people who may only play casual magic at this point on top of that we have had a recent shift in how secret layers are sold and i don't like this, this shift either traditionally it is that you can buy as many secret layers as you want within the time frame because they're printed to demand they're now being put into a certain number. If you don't get in the door at the beginning, you lose out. So for example, I really want to buy the Augustus Trinosphere Sphere Resistance one, but I don't think I'm going to get a copy because there's going to be huge waiting queues. I don't want to queue and bots and scalpers are going to buy them and stick them on eBay. So then you combine this idea that you've got to get in first into the getting into the drop with this FOMO hype beast culture thing alongside the randomized element and the two combine to make it seem worse than it was before because it is worse than it is before secret layers were a lot better when we had to just wait for them and they're printed demand we've only had like one or two drops that have allowed scalpers to get hold of the stuff thus far and the sheldon one was printed to demand as well to avoid this so really it was only cats and dogs that was an issue i guess we'll see with these drops coming the, the new set of summer and equinox and all that stuff we'll see how bad the scalping get as for the secret layers we have secret layer special which is this selection of seven cards they're very much fallout shelter adjacent steel shaper's gift propaganda elixir of immortality council's judgment idyllic tutor anger and lightning bolt anger steel shaper's gift idyllic tutor and a propaganda are all around the four buck mark and council judgment outside of the clue edition version is also a few bucks too so ultimately i don't really hate the value that's in here i like the fact that they've gone through each of the um the, the special categories of traits within fallout and given each one of the them and a, and a kid in the thing. I think it's sweet, but I'm not really after the cards and I won't play with most of them outside of the tutors and council's judgment. The points of interest won't give us lands, command tower, Bajuga Bog, Reflecting Pool, Reliquary Tower, and Fabled Passage. Fabled Passage will continue to hold some amount of value forevermore as one of the more affordable fetch lands at around six to seven dollars at the moment. All of these are solid picks if you want to kit out your commander deck with some more Fallout themed cards. The Vault Boy one though is infinitely funny to me. It's four cards because we know some of these are worth more money. That's kind of cynical, but it's true. Trinisphere and Winter Warp are both around $15 and Sphere of Resistance is that cheapest outside of Gold Border, around 30 bucks at the moment. Meanwhile, Grand Arbiter Augustine the Third, or fourth, sorry. God, I think we should actually see a historical version of uh, his ancestors or whatever. Anyway, that's a different point. But Grand Augustine the Fourth, he is a couple of dollars too. The best value among them, that's why you're getting less cards, but it's all stacks pieces. A famous stacks commander, Trinisphere being a an, a prison piece in Legacy and also a prison piece in Commander to an extent, and Winter Orb and Sphere of Resistance both being classic stacks artifacts. It always makes me laugh when we see a product that kind of suggests that stacks is okay to play. And with Ravages of War in the Fallout theme as well, as well as Wasteland, it's almost like Wizards want to make out that the Fallout cards are the ones that are looking to have that stacksy game plan more so than anything else in Magic, which is really funny because I love stacks. I love Fallout. Either way, I'm going to try and get one of these and see if I get absolutely fucked by bots and wait queues. Other than that, I just don't think it's any more predatory than it has been before, except for the fact that everything's heightened and exaggerated because more eyes are on it, and now we've got the FOMO of missing out because the window to buy it is just get it before it's gone. So it's the same issue we had last month, whether there's a mana vault involved or not. Let me know if you think I'm missing the mark or whether I'm on the mark. And let me know if you'd rather I was more angry. Sorry, I can't be. I just don't care enough when they, when wizards decide to make some cards more rare than others. It's kind of a thing we have to accept as part of the game's system. And it doesn't really hurt as long as it's not hurting the accessibility of the competitive format. I've been Vince, also supposed to come on the internet. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.